Hey there, good afternoon. I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today on Habitat Hints, we're going to be talking about stocking your local pond, not your local pond, your own pond. And I have MDC's Andrew Branson here with me, and he's going to tell us all we need to know about how you stock your pond, when you should stock your pond, and so much more. So let me turn this around and we'll talk with Andrew. Hey there, Andrew. How are you today? Lucas, I'm doing great. Good, good. So Andrew, we're stocking, we're talking about stocking your pond today. First and foremost, when you create a pond, what is the first thing you need to do when it comes to stocking? Yeah, stocking the pond is real important uh, to get it right at the beginning in order to have a successful fishing pond. Um, there are all different types of fish you could stock, but there are certain ones that if you add them at the right time, it creates for a good overall balance, overall fishing. And those species are bluegill, bass, largemouth bass specifically, and channel catfish. Those are the, the three that we recommend to provide good fishing. Now, when stocking your pond, when is the best time to stock your pond? Like right now here in the hardest summer, probably is not the greatest time to stock your pond? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the hot water, warm water is low in oxygen. So yeah, it's best to stock your pond in the spring and in the fall. Uh, if it's a brand new pond, there's no fish in it, maybe a newly built pond or a pond that's been renovated, what we recommend is that you start out by stocking bluegill and channel catfish in the spring and then let them grow a little bit. These are going to be small little fingerling type fish that they get, uh, but you stock those in the spring, they grow up a little bit, and then in the fall you stock the predator fish. Those are the largemouth bass. And at that point the bluegill channel catfish are big enough that they can kind of keep, compete and the bass will feed on them and overall it makes a good balance. Uh, and then at that point, you've got a good little system set up there. Now, is there certain timings when you want to stock certain fish? I know we were talking before this today and about crappie, you know, I'm a big crappie guy myself, but say, why is crappie kind of frowned upon when you want to put them in a pond? Right, yeah, again, crappie is not one of the three that we mentioned. Um, now you can do crappie, you can be successful, uh, but there are things to know with crappie. crappie uh, fills the role as, as a predator. It's like that largemouth bass. So crappie are wanting to feed on the bluegill. And if you've got largemouth bass and crappie in your pond, you can have a problem with there not being enough bluegill to go around. And what people often run into is they'll say, well, I've got crappie, but they're, they're paper thin, or my bass are thin and don't get very big. And that's typically because there's not enough bluegill to go around to feed them. So we, uh, we recommend not going with crappie but if someone does want to go with crappie, because like you said, boy, crappie, are, they're tasty, mm -hmm. they're good to eat, fun For to sure. catch. Um, it's all about controlling the numbers. You don't want to have so many crappie, so many bass, that there's not enough bluegill. Uh, so to be successful with crappie, you need to have largemouth bass also, because the bass get bigger. The bass are actually feeding on crappie too a little bit. So bass help to kind of lower those crappie numbers so they're not overpopulated. Um, so again, Going with bluegill, channel catfish, and largemouth bass, it all works out. The bass feed on that. There's enough food for everybody. If you throw in that other predator, the crappie, you can kind of have some issues. Uh, so make sure you have a good bass population to kind of keep those crappie thin down too. Now, how you know when you say a good amount, is there like a size of the pond, how many fish kind of thing? How you how do you decide how many fish to go with? Yep, and so forth. Yeah, the size of the pond is important. Uh, that determines how many fish to stock with. Also, the part of the state that you're in. If you're in northern Missouri, stocking rates are different than in southern Missouri. And the best way to find out those numbers is we have information on our website about pond stocking. And we have a Missouri Fish Producers Guide, and that directs people to where they can actually purchase fish. But on that guide, it also talks about how many fish you need to stock per acre, depending on where you live. So that's a good that's a good gauge to go, go by. Uh, the other option, and th this is maybe the better one, is to uh, if you're if you're getting involved with this, contact your local fisheries management biologist for your county. That you can locate them on our website. Uh, but they also know stocking rates for that area. But yeah, it is important to stock at the right amounts because when you purchase fish to stock your pond, you don't want to waste your money. You don't want to buy way too many and or you don't want to buy too too few and then they don't kind of populate as fast as they can okay so and again i want to echo you know stocking is stocking is very important 
to know when the timing and right now here in the summer is probably is not the good best time to stock yeah. you would recommend early early spring or fall or late That's fall right. yeah uh, again if you can start your stocking in the spring you start with the bluegill and the channel catfish and then about six months or so later you can add the predator fish uh, or you can stock those beginning fish in the fall and then the roll around next spring that's when you add the predator fish okay. so you basically the the key is yeah stock either spring or fall and you want to get several months six months or so before you put in that big predator now andrew if i i'm a landowner and i'm creating a uh pond who i mean where can i get more information who can i contact well like i said the uh you contact your local mdc regional office and they can direct you to who your fisheries management biologist is for your county uh, again, you can also find that on our website, you know, at mdcmo.gov and contact us, hit your county and it'll pop up all the contacts. Uh, I would give them a call and tell them your situation and they've got great advice. They, they can assist you. They can actually come out if they need to and, and check out your pond. Uh, there's no charge for any of that. It's just a, a service we provide. But yeah, getting familiar with your local fisheries management biologist, that's a, that's a big plus. All right. I really appreciate it. Uh, Really appreciate it, Andrew, and I'm going to echo what he said. You know, if you want to learn more about uh, stocking your pond and more information about different uh, things on ponds, you can check out our website at mdc.mo.gov. I hope you all have a great and wonderful day.